on that level for us. Ladies and gentlemen, what we're here today about is nothing short of American freedom. Uh, uh, you know, we, we live in one of the greatest countries in the world. Uh, and it was not until recently when uh, the Supreme Court uh, passed the decision reaffirming um, our relationships as equals um, and recognized our marriages that I personally felt that I could say the Pledge of Allegiance and feel like I was included. So at this time, if you would please rise and join me and sing the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the public for which it stands, one nation, under God, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'd like to, uh, if I could, I want to be sure that I'm quoting this gentleman correctly, so if you would just give me just a second to whip out my handy cell phone here. You know, we, um, we often forget that it's our responsibility to continue the work of our founding fathers. We act as though they set it up and walked away and we don't have to do anything for it. Um, I look at the Constitution as a book and a guideline on how government can fairly and respectfully treat its citizens and allow them to live without any form of oppression, allow them to, to, to be who they are no matter what. Um, and I was just happened to be looking through the other day and I saw something that really struck my heart and I want to share that with you right now. Provided I can get my phone to cooperate. Um, because the truth and honesty is, is that when the founding fathers were drafting the Declaration, were drafting the Declaration, they realized there were some things they might want to worry about a little bit later, but they needed to be, they were important to them, and they needed to include it. Um, and one of those things was the separation of church and state. They decided to separate church and state for many reasons. Mainly because some of them were actually grandchildren of people who had been in Salem with religious persecution caused the death of 16 people, 16 innocent people at the behest of an eight-year-old child who claimed that she was touched by God. And yet she caused the death of 16 innocent people. Uh, upon presenting the Bill of Rights to Congress, Oh, and where is he? I'm sorry, y'all have been reposting my video on my own page so many times. I don't know if I can find this yet. Um, hold on. There's always more than one way to skin a cat. And I happen to have a couple knives. Really, I... There we go. Upon presenting the Bill of Rights to the United States Congress, President James Madison said, and I quote, the civil rights of none shall be abridged on account of religious belief or worship, nor shall any national religion be established, nor shall the full and equal rights of conscience in any way, manner, or pretext be infringed. That is the beginning of freedom in America. It's our job and our responsibility to see to it that that Constitution gets completed, that we, within our generation, within our lifetime, that we finish the job that our founding fathers started to create a country where everyone is free from oppression of any form, shape, size, or fashion. I hope that's what we're all here to do today. Uh, right now, I'd like to start with our first speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, representing the Knights and Orchid Society, I'd like to introduce you to an amazing man and an activist. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would please give a hand to Q Bell. We're led by the LGBT community and we fight for the 
responsibility and justice for the LGBT community. This past weekend, the greatest commandment in the world, God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, to actually go into a space and convene with like other LGBTQ like leadership. Yourself, and we got so much accomplished in such, like such a very short period of time. But the most, the most important thing that I actually um, learned at this conference was that there was enough space in the room for everybody to be able to have a seat at the table. There were so many different religions. There were so many different types of people. There weren't just African Americans. There were Latinos. There were uh, black people or African American. There were Hispanic. Um, there were Asian, Pacific Islander. We had people from everywhere. But the one thing that I find most important was that regardless of your beliefs, regardless of how you feel, your traditions, and who you worship, there was a place for you at the table at that convenience. And what was amazing to me is that we were able to have so many different types of people, so much diversity in one small room, and nobody felt uncomfortable. So I think the message going forth to start out today is that be mindful of the space that you take up. Certain people take up a lot of space. But there will be more room at the table for all of us if we all gave a little bit of our space. It doesn't take a lot to be respectful of a person. This entire community, we were, we were respectful of people's pronouns, how they wanted to be addressed. We were respectful of their religion. I understood after coming from that community that my God doesn't have to be above anybody else. That you're free to worship who you choose. that we create energy. We, one thing I learned from Saul, this is creating altars. 
there's stuff that you want to place. We don't have an altar here, but I'm, I'm a believer that you can create an altar wherever you need one. And I feel like right now is a place that we need one. So as we take a few moments, if you could, if there's somebody that you want to call into the space, what, be it an ancestor, be it a brother, a sister, your mentor, your leader, whoever inspires you, whatever you need in this moment, call them into this place and let, them, let their energy consume you. In the moment I want to call, I want to call on my best friend, Janice Caldwell. I need her in this space. If there are any others that would like to come into this space or call their ancestors into this space, just recite their names and you'll, I promise you, you'll feel their energy. They'll be here in this moment with you. Yeah, come into the space. Thank you. Sheila. Sheila, we invite you into this space. I'll call my brother, Ray. Ray, we invite you into this space. Ray, into this space. Blondell. Blondell. Blondell, we invite you to space. Blondell. Blondell. Blondell, we invite you to this space. Donnie Miller. Donnie Miller. Donnie Miller, we invite you into the space. D.D. Williams. D.D. Williams, we invite you into the space. The 21... Harvey Milk, we invite you into the space. The 21 trans women who have been murdered this year. The 21 trans women who have been murdered this year, please. We need your presence in this space. The victims of pulse. The victims of violence, we need you in this space. Kai Peterson, we need you in this space. Calling Dabs Kabayan. Dabs Kabayan, we need you in this space. Healing, we need you in this space. Peace. Sandra Bland, say your name. We need you in this place. Victor and Rose, we need you in this space. At this time, if we can just offer up a moment of silence for those who we call into the space and ask that their energy be consumed here at the guarantees us, each and every one, a place at the table. We stand here today, this is a historic event. There are at least seven to nine equality organizations from across the state today, standing together in unity and solidarity for the first time in our state. We have made history today just by I do want to give a shout out real quick, like, to the Montgomery Police Department for standing with us, for protecting us, for being on the right side of history, for making Alabama a more beautiful place to be. Thank you to the Montgomery Police Department and to those who have supported us. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to call to the stage someone who's become a very dear friend of mine. Ladies and gentlemen, he needs no further introduction. If you would, please welcome to the stage, Dr. Paul Hart. One block, one street from this location is a fountain. And all the words of that fountain, it reads, But let justice roll down like the waters and righteousness like an everlasting stream. Let justice roll down like the water. Say it with me. Let justice roll down like the waters. Again, let justice roll down like the waters. Let me tell you, friends, on that fountain, there is a blank space in the names of the martyrs of the civil rights movement. Why? Because their work is not done. There are more names to be added. There is more to be done for freedom and civil rights and justice for all America's children. So on that fountain, think of that space as a place for you and a place for I. But let justice roll down like the waters. I'd like to know from you today, whether you're standing over here with me or you're standing anywhere else, are you 
a registered voter in the state of Alabama. our backyard to tell us how to deal with our elected officials. Somebody yeah. say amen. Yeah. Amen. I'd like to hear it from you again. Say it with me. I am a registered voter. I am a registered voter of the state of Alabama. Of the state of Alabama. Thank you. People ask me, what gets you through? How do you deal with it? How do you deal with loss and grief and all the rest of it? And it comes to me in the words of this song. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen could ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. That guilty pair down, down, down with their... God gave his son to win, his erring child he reconciled. Folks, the thing that gets me through is to know that God's love is greater than anything. It's greater than grief. It's greater than loss. It's greater than my critics and or anybody else. God's love is greater than anything that's standing here. And God's love is greater than an unrighteous judge. Yes! That's what gets me through, to know that God's love and the love of his people. You know what? In Alabama, we have a tradition that when you lose somebody, you will come to your house and find public wishes all over the place. I have to tell you, it was God's people and their love demonstrated in every small way and in every great way after losing my husband. It's justice for all. It's love for all. Not just a few. And not just some. I have a couple of more words to say and then I will be moving on. This occurred to me just recently and I think that it's appropriate. Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you do your deeds to be seen by men and walk about in long judicial robes and devour widowers' houses for appearance sake, make long prayers, and these receive the great condemnation. Somebody say amen. Amen. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut the kingdom of heaven in people's faces, for you neither enter yourselves nor allow those who would go to enter in. But while we're at it, I'm reminded that God's love is deeper than even that. That God's love was extended to the scribes and the Pharisees and the hypocrites. So, what is it that gets you to the night? It's the love of God. The love of His people. The love of your community. So, my friends, I want you to look around at the faces of the folks next to you. It's these folks. Your family that gets you through. Liberty and justice for all, not just some, not just a few, but liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I just wanted to let you guys know that one of the lovely organizations that we're working with today, Free to Be United, has got cold water over here. It's got water over here for anybody who wants it and needs it. Just to let you know. And there's coffee down the bottom, free coffee provided by Starbucks if anybody needs anything. Um, we do have food trucks that are going to be setting up for lunch later on today. Um, I do want to thank Paul for his message. Paul is correct. God's love, the earth is just a, a, a tiny little speck in the universe. A tiny little speck in a giant universe. And God's love is 10,000 times greater than the universe. God's love has enough room for all of his children on this little teeny tiny earth floating in a small universe in the sea of 
Love. Right here, right now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome to the stage a youth outreach activist from Montgomery Pride United. If you would please put your hands together for the energetic and enigmatic Mr. James Tay. of the transgender community here in Alabama. Yes. My trans community has faced horrible high murder rates, especially my black and brown trans women of color. Yes. This level of hatred and murder needs to stop for my trans community because truthfully, trans is beautiful. All across 
America. We need to see a progression and revolution for love, unity, and human rights. Now, I leave you with a poem I wrote for inspiration called Eminem. To save sinners. Give me a moment, y'all. That's us. That will be you. That's me. Christ Jesus came into the world. I'm going to try to hold back the tears so I can just pause. I wrote it as I was crying. Since the ancient Egyptian times, we have flourished on this earth and called it mine and live brilliantly outside the line. Although we have been kicked out of churches, forgotten in history, silenced in politics, outcast in society, still, like the luminous sun, we rise. My LGBTQ community, my gay beloved brothers and sisters, black, white, tall, short, all fat. Hold your hands up high. Take pride in yourselves. We are the diamonds in the sky. You are neither a mistake, a defect, a sinner, nor confused. You are amazingly designed and beautifully divine. Let's never forget the many trailblazers that came before us. James Baldwin, Langston Hughes, Nikki Giovanni, Alice Walker, Bayard Rustin, yeah. Alvin yeah. Ailey, Elan Harris, Sylvester, yeah. Richmond Barthé, and many, many, many more. We are artistic and imaginative. From architecture to hair, from lecture to fashion, from dance to medicine. We are human. We are the people. We are a community. We are citizens. Repeat, we are citizens. We are equal. We are the colors of liberty that define America. Yes.